Chats, could you give us a quick one, two, three? Well, thank you. Um, Jan and Christian, it's very nice to see you back together again. Last time we did, this, we did a lot of business online. Um, I was trying to think before doing this of films in which the sequel is better than the original. And I came up with Godfather Part 2, Star Wars, Toy Story 2, if you're pushing the boundaries, Rocky 4. Have we got a Part 2 blockbuster this Friday between the two of you, Jan? I believe we do. Um, you know, uh, Christian's always uh, someone who's in good shape, who's looking forward for a hard battle. And I think this time I'm actually ready to put on the boxing gloves and, and, and give him a run for his money. Um, ironically, we both failed last time. So, um, you know, I think uh, it's going to be an interesting one come Friday. You were saying that you feel in a better place this time than Ibiza. Is that fair? Yeah, much better. Um, Ibiza for me was, was tricky, you know, coming in. I, I knew I'd had, you know, five weeks coming in being injury free. And it's been good since then and made good progress. And, you know, looking forward to being more of the athlete that I'm probably known for. What about you, Christian? How, how sort of significant an event to have another a crack at this man? Uh, well, of course, like it's second last race you're doing. And the fact that we're now getting to race twice this year, and as he said, we both lost in Ibiza, and I think we're both as eager to come on top of that podium on Friday. And uh, yeah, like it's later on into the season, and we also expect that the field in general is uh, in better shape. So uh, yeah, of course, being able to come on top on the podium on Friday will be huge. What did you learn in Ibiza? I learned, uh, I'm not sure really, like, uh, <laughs> you, you can't just look at one or two guys, like uh, when Alistair was up front, and I didn't really count the guys up who was in his breakaway when they sort of separated on the bike, and I thought that I had control on Jan because he was uh, in my sort of pack halfway through on the bike, and certainly Max was the one getting away with the win, so you have to, you can't just look at one or two guys, you have to be aware of the whole sort of field and uh, uh, maybe be more aggressive halfway through the race and not just be on the, uh, the defensive side. Um, yeah, and what did you take from, from Ibiza, from your own perspective, but also the, the field around you? Yeah, from, from my own perspective, I, if I'm very honest, Ibiza was actually, <laughs> it was actually somewhat of a success, you know, after my last year and my injury story and where I'd come from. It was somewhat eye-opening to see that the depth of the field is that much better. Um, personally, I was surprised about how unaggressive you were and how much you were waiting and thinking everybody's just going to wait for you because that is something, you know, for the claims you make. I mean, you kind of want to, you want to go out there and grab it by the neck. Um, so I don't think we're going to see that mistake again. Passive? Is that, is that fair from Ibiza? Yeah, I guess so. Like... Uh uh, early on, like even on the bike, like I was going out in my power and uh, maybe a little bit with the learnings from uh, Edmonton, I was thinking like the second half will, will matter more, but suddenly like uh, the group separated and uh, I was sort of still thinking second half and especially on the run, it will, uh, I, I can catch on quite a lot, but then suddenly I ran out of, I didn't just run out of uh, distance, I was also not running fast enough uh, on the run to catch. Um, uh, Max and uh, yeah, uh, but also felt going into the races in May, I missed sort of that top end gear in leg speed or race pace. Uh, and I feel, especially in the short distance race I've done now since May, that it's been going in the right direction. And uh, uh, even for a 100k race, I think I'm better prepared in terms of the leg speed now. Um, a lot of people talk about the baton and whether the baton is being passed or whether you finished holding the baton. How significant? And how important is it to you to finish in the right way, given the career you've had? Um, you know, for me, it's something that I hold true and dear. Like, I've, I, I love the feeling of winning and I love the feeling of cherishing high performance. And that's something that I've always done. I've always set my intentions to come and bring out the very best in me. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, uh, to testing that and, and, and letting the roulette run uh, on the weekend. The beauty, however, unlike in roulette, is that you can, 
influence how that ball spins very much and I'm looking forward to giving you the top spin. Christian's been very vocal about the fact that he is desperate to win a PTO event. With, with that in mind, what would it mean to you to be standing at the top of the podium? Yeah, honestly, like, like man, I, I totally respect what you've done and everything, but it does remind me a little bit of when I speak to my daughter. Um, I, I, I explain to her the concept of crying wolf. And, you know, when every single time you say, oh, I'm going to win, I'm going to smash you, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Well, we're waiting and uh, we've waited for a while now. So uh, I'm going to keep you waiting a little bit longer. Challenge accepted. I guess you better wait two more days and then we will be there. Very good. I can feel the, the, the sort of tension. How, I mean, how much do you want to beat Christian in what is, you know, the, 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 the embers of your career? There's been a lot of talk about the two of you bracketed together type thing. How much... Does a victory over this man mean to you? Yeah, of course, he, his accolades make him, you know, uh, he's definitely had the best season anyone in triathlon has ever had. And that's someone very much worthy of going up for. Um, to be honest, however, I've been around for a long time and there's always been somebody who's there. There's always been somebody who's knocking on the door. And I try and really focus on my race and, and, and winning. And of course, Christian being there would add um, you know, a certain charisma, a certain nice uh, taste to victory. But I think the field here in general, winning a, winning a race is, is, is a pretty special experience in itself. And if you are standing on the top spot on Friday, does that end this debate in this moment? Uh, I wouldn't say so, like, because uh, it's two different time frame as well. Like, he won his first big title in... 2008, <laughs> like uh, 15 years ago, and that was basically the year I started triathlon. So the fact that he's still in the game, in the very top end of the game, is uh, um, yeah, extremely impressive. And uh, I think also the way Jan is finishing his career is going to be more uh, cr like Nice, the World Championship, is going to be more like, I guess, the, the main target. And if he's standing on top of the podium there, that's, uh, yeah, it's going to be. A it, it adds a lot of spice for the viewer with the two of you going here. Does, does it genuinely add spice to you, to your planning, to being here when you get to, to go against Christian? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, Christian only announced it quite late. I felt that he's coming. Um, and, um, you know, for me, of course, the journey of getting to the start line is always something. And, and having him there has definitely helped me through the last track sets and you know making sure uh, there is there is that extra mile being covered and that's you know probably the biggest compliment I could make to you as well because there's not many people in the world that would do that to me anymore you know, like you said I've been around for 23 years and uh, it turns into a routine until somebody comes that's worth pushing for and I would have to admit that Christian is one of those guys backhanded compliment but likewise does it add to your preparation to your mental uh, sort of preparation when you know this man is on the start line alongside you? Yeah, of course. Like, uh, every chance you have to raise Jan, like, it brings more, like, prestige to the race. Because it's not just about the prize money, it's also, like, the athletes you're racing and uh, everything that he has achieved. And, uh, of course, it's, again, gets, gets me up of, uh, out of the bed in the morning as well. In the same way, he's getting more motivated to do the training, getting in the shape you need to be for this race. Does it come down to the two of you and the two of you alone on Friday? Or do you look at the field and think actually there are one or two other runners and riders here just to keep an eye on? Well, I think the, the thing is that uh, that would kind of, it would be amazing if it was the two of us. Like that would really be a, a, a dream scenario. Like I'd, I'd love to have a proper crack. Um, and I feel that my run has definitely come far enough up that um, I think if there's the two of us, it would actually be a proper ding-dong battle. Uh, and that's, yeah, that would be incredibly exciting. You can't discount the rest of the field. There's some incredible athletes here. Um, you know, there's, there's probably uh, at least a stronger biker and uh, possibly a stronger runner in the field than, than the both of us. But for that, we will have to wait until Friday and uh, just remember that it's a triathlon and not an individual event. I think that's what we also learned in Ibiza. We can't just look at or be aware of the two of us. It's, uh, you have Magnus, you have Jason, you have a lot of guys who can uh, mix it up. And uh, yeah, 
I have to look at more guys and not just one or two. Um, we, we must let you go because I know you've got a lot of other things to get on to, but I'd just like to ask you one last question, Christian, with Jan alongside. Just uh, not speaking on behalf of everybody, but just the, the impact that he has had on the sport of triathlon and, and the opportunity you've got just to, to pay tribute to the man alongside you. Well, it's, it, it's an action. Uh, quite honored to be able to race him and to after seeing him like as I said like for the first time when I was searching on uh, triathlon on YouTube as I was starting back in 2008 it was Jan who popped up and uh, training Danes but then wash <laughs> no, no that, that was later that okay. was actually a few three years later and it's 48 hours training day ah yeah and, uh, true that was actually later yeah you're it was right. like in 2011 yeah. I think <laughs> and uh, looking up to like him and uh, Javier and uh, that generation and also the way he changed so i would say he was maybe the first one to actually make arm and distance uh, yeah change that in terms of the performance like uh, bring it up not just one or two stats but like uh, really being uh, dominant there and uh, uh, truly inspirational athletes enough of the niceties or um, is, is that a compliment that you'll accept no absolutely i mean like i said we are, i think we have all the respect in the world for each other it doesn't mean we don't want to jump at each other's throats once the race gun goes. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, what, what really is what the sport is all about. It's rivalries that make it more exciting. And, um, you know, you need the clouds to show how fast the aeroplane can fly. Here's to a fabulous sequel. Jens, thank you very much indeed. Good luck on, on uh, Friday. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Well done, guys. Thank, thank you very you much well. indeed. Well done. Thank you for your patience as well.